now that I showed you how to rig um, these models, I'm going to show you how I animate them. And if you're already experienced with Source Filmmaker, you'll already know a few tricks on how to animate. Um, if you've never used the graph editor, I'll show you why it's so important and why it's way easier to use than the motion editor. So let me move. And I'm actually going to mess with Bumblebee because most models in, in so the workshop are going to look like Bumblebee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what you're going to do is come up here, right click, detach it, go to detach rig, detach all, and that'll remove the rig off of him. So now he's back to just being a normal boned model. And um, the reason why I'm going to focus more on Bumblebee and stuff like that is because most of the models are still kind of old and haven't been updated. So you're going to run so this is more of the problem that you're going to run into. So let me show you how I animate the models. So you're going to do is come back here, go to graphic editor. And um, so this is how the graph edit editor works. So you press your control button on your keyboard and it'll highlight all the bones. What you're going to do is just click on a bone. So left click on this bone. It'll show you like a little tool. What you're going to do is come down here. Use your screen R tool, and it's going to come up with this circle. This allows you way more flexibility. Um, don't press the center square because that just means that you move the bone. It doesn't mean you rotate. Um, this highlighted area outside lets you do a more precise rotation. This uh, lets you do a more free rotation. So if you pay attention right here, It'll be empty like this before you touch a bone. As soon as you press on a bone, it'll come up with this. This is called a keyframe, which means that this is a moment captured within the frame of the scene. And I'll show you how it works. So the keyframe is on zero seconds right now. If you move the timeline over to one second and then click on the bone again, It'll create another key. That means that during this whole one second, the arm is in this position. If you keep it on the one second mark and you move it like this, this means that from eight, from zero seconds to one second, the arm moved. This tool is great because this is how you're supposed to animate in Source Filmmaker. What you're supposed to do is have the model in a position so say let me kind of organize let me kind of have them in a pose right here so he's kind of like in a casual pose um i'll move the camera over so he's kind of in a you know casual pose he's not like alert or anything so you're gonna come up here click on his head go down here so you select your tool click on it and then it'll come up with the keyframe you can move the keyframe over so I had it on one second before but you can actually put a keyframe at any moment in the timeline so if you put it on four and you move him in four seconds, it'll take way longer because this is him moving his head from the zero keyframe to the four second keyframe. And to delete, all you do is just right click and then delete key. Um, if you want him to like move his head really fast, what you're going to do is just use the scroll on your mouse to zoom in you'll see the seconds in between each second so this is 0 0.1 0 0.2 it goes all the way to 0 0.9 and then one second what you can do is when you zoom in you can move over to the 0 0.5 second move his head and now his head his head now moves a little bit faster 
as if it was in the one second mark. Um, you don't have to go back and put a new keyframe if it's not as fast as you want it to. You can actually click, left click on the keyframe and drag it across. So if if he if he's not moving his head fast enough to you to whatever he's reacting to, it, you can actually move it back to one zero point one second, and now he moves now he moves his head really fast. Or you can drag it back up to one second, and it moves like that. Okay, so zoom out. Come down here to his spine. Click it. So you can see that it's still in the one second. So go over to the one second mark. Kind of move it slightly. You can also move the keyframe that's at zero and move it forward. So at zero, there's no keyframe. So the chest isn't moving. The chest is not going to move until it reaches that first keyframe. And this is a little bit more realistic because in real life, when you move your head, you usually move your head first before your tor your torso starts moving along with it. Um, that might be a little bit too late. Maybe do it at the 0 0.2. So yeah, there you go. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do to animate. It's um, It seems a lot simpler than I was making it out to be, but do use the graphic editor. It is just very important to animating, I believe, and it just makes things way easier. Um, the big factor is that is the keyframing. You can have a model in a pose and then have them in a different pose in the keyframe and the program automatically moves him from one position to the other. So this is position one, this is position two, and it just automatically does, does that for you. If you've been using the motion editor, you'll notice that you've had to do everything manually. You can only animate in the motion editor if the scene is plain. So like when you press play here, you can only move if it's plain. If it's not plain, and you move it, it doesn't animate that part. You can still move it, but it won't animate it like it did here. Um, if you want to delete or completely get rid of animations that you do in that, just um, left click it, hold down, and then play the scene, and then it'll automatically stop it. So this is what the motion editor is used. So here in the clip editor, in the graphic editor, we used it to make a pose and make it make him move into another pose from one keyframe to another. If you don't like how the pose looks, but you don't want to change, you can still do it in this one. Like you can move his head slightly to the left. He won't be looking directly at the camera. He'll still look at where you had originally put him on the second keyframe. However, if you animate if you move something in the motion editor, let's say if you move his head all the way around, then see he doesn't stop where you put the second frame. This is because you've moved the bone. So um, you basically moved, you didn't just move his head bone, you've also moved the animation. You've moved where it begins and where it stops. When you do it, and you can just put him back normally. When you go to a keyframe and you move his head, you're only moving his head and you're only positioning it for that keyframe. When you move it in the motion editor, you're you're changing the animation for the whole scene. You're moving it for the entire time, not just for the keyframe. So if you move his head all the way back, he won't be looking to the side like you had originally made him do because you move because the animation of him looking to the left has now been rotated completely. And um, you can just go ahead and undo it if you don't want to do anything else. So um, those are a few tricks that you can use to animate. Um, but yeah, it's very important to use the graphic editor. It's what I use to animate the transformers. Um, I'll show you how to animate the arms right here. So arm 2 is his shoulder. 
just click it creates a key go over to one second move it up and now his arms are moving go down to arm three which is his elbow um, the keyframes are right there go to one second and then like that And that's how I use to animate. Um, obviously, it doesn't look natural because he just stops. Um, if you're continuously adding positions for him to move into, uh, it looks a little bit more natural. So yeah, guys, that's how I animate using these models. This is just a quick tutorial on how I move them in the graphic editor. If you guys are curious on what tools in SFM I used, um, I showed you guys. So just a recap. So I showed you guys where to find the models, how to download them, um, how different each model is from another. Uh, showed you how to rig them, specifically the Bumblebee and Optimus Prime ones. Some of the other ones might be harder to rig. Um, you don't have to rig. You can easily move a character without having to rig them. Uh, I do it all the time. You just have to make sure that you make it look as fluid as possible. But when you're starting out, it's not going to look completely realistic and anything like that. Um, Source Filmmaker is a game engine uh, software more than it is um, a filmmaking tool or a modeling tool. Something like Blender is used more for animation and stuff. Source Filmmaker was used just to make Valve's um, short movies, but it uses in-game properties. So it's not always going to have the level of quality that uh, a program like Blender is going to have. But the great thing about Source Filmmaker is I believe it's very easy to get into. It takes time but it's very easy once you start going. If you guys are having trouble with it, go ahead and comment down below on what specific stuff you're having trouble with. Um, if you want me to get into more specifics, like stuff that I probably glossed over that you didn't understand, just go ahead and comment down below and I'll try my best to um, make a video of it. But yeah, this is just a video to show you guys how I animate the models, um, as you can see. It's nothing harder than that. It may look like it's like a beginner, but that's just because I was showing you guys how to keyframe and use the graphic editor and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy.